Lawmakers celebrating Friday's victory in the House. Representative Steve Scalise, he says yesterday's GOP win helps protect the economy and American families. He joins us now with more on what's next. Welcome, Congressman. Great to have you here today. Good being with you, Uma. You know, the 230-189 vote now sets the stage for a showdown with the Democratic-led Senate and challenges the House to pass it as a straightforward funding bill that the president will sign. But as you know, your critics are saying this is a waste of time since the president will not accept defeat and will veto any bill that threatens to defund Obamacare. What gives you the confidence that you can be successful in your efforts to defund this health care measure? We've some, heard some of those same hollow threats before. In fact, the president's threatened vetoes on many of our bills that we've passed to either repeal or defund or delay parts of his law. Uh, he, he talks about the 41 votes we've taken in Moxham. He fails to mention President Obama himself has signed seven of those bills into law uh, to either defund, repeal, or delay parts of his health care law. So he's admitting uh, that, that this law is unworkable. In fact, the president himself said he wants to give exemptions and waivers and delays only to the privileged class who can get access to the White House, whether it's the employer mandate, uh, whether it's these big gifts he gave to insurance companies a few weeks ago, but he won't give that same relief to American families. That's what we're fighting for, and we said we're willing to fund government properly while also protecting families against the devastation of the president's health care law and taking default off the table as an option. Well, I know that you and many other folks are concerned about the impact Obamacare is already having on jobs and the economy, and that you have a plan that expands tax breaks for Americans who buy their own health insurance. It's an alternative that you're hoping gains more traction. Tell us more about it. Sure. The House Republican Study Committee, which I chair, is 175 members of the House uh, that are members. We put together uh, a bill that's a true alternative to the president's health care law called the American Health Care Reform Act. It represents a better way that actually fixes problems to lower costs in health care and increase access. Uh, we, number one, we make sure uh, that people have tax equalization so that right now if you want to buy insurance on your own, uh, it's, it's not the same as buying it through your employer because your employer can deduct the expenses you as an American have to use your after-tax dollars. We change that and say every American ought to same, have that same ability. You as a family should be able to deduct your health costs if you buy a better plan on your own. We, we should allow people to buy across state lines. I have the real buying power of large corporations by pooling together and getting the same buying power uh, as co corporations. Uh, we make sure people pre-existing conditions are not discriminated against. Uh, a number of really good reforms that are in our bill that have been proven to lower costs and increase access, which is a contrast to the president's health care law, uh, where just here in Louisiana, families are facing over 50 percent increases in their health care costs because of his law. But back to the politics of what's at play right now, are you at all worried that the GOP will pay a stiff price for being perceived as the ones who would be responsible for a partial shutdown of the government? No, in fact, that's why we passed a bill yesterday with a very large uh, majority, including bipartisan support, to continue funding the government while also addressing uh, that the president's health care law is unworkable. He's admitting himself, but he doesn't want to provide relief to families that we're fighting for. Uh, so we're going to continue to fight and use every legislative tool that we have uh, to keep government funded, to make sure we pay our debts, uh, while also addressing the problems uh, that the president's health care law is creating, not only to our economy, which are devastating. I mean, union bosses like James Hoffa are, are pointing out how the president's health care law is destroying the middle class work week. Uh, these are real problems, and the president just wants to ignore it and, and trudge forward regardless of the damage and devastation it's causing to families all over this country. Well, what about the effort to delay Obamacare, at least for a year, for everyone? Do you see that as a viable option if the defunding efforts don't succeed? I think all of these are really good options. I think you'll see us in the House uh, when we come back next week actually take up a bill to increase the uh, nation's debt ce ceiling, the borrowing limit, uh, while also uh, putting a one-year delay of Obamacare in place and addressing a number of the other reforms that need to be made to get our economy back on track and to get us on a balanced budget path, which is something we've been needing to do for a long time, approving things like the Keystone Pipeline, again, which has massive bipartisan support. And just because some extremists on the president's left uh, don't want to do this. The president has said no to 25,000 new American jobs in energy security for America. So we're going to continue fighting for American families to get our economy moving again and to get our, our country back on a path to balance so that uh, we don't have to keep uh, borrowing money, spending money we don't have in Washington, actually moving, moving our country forward and getting the economy moving again. Congressman, thank you very much for joining us with your insights. Appreciate it. Thanks, Uma. Great to be with you.